Hi, I'm Brother Jericho for Truth and Bible Prophecy. Avoiding the mark of the beast is God's urgent message to the world at end time. What is the mark of the beast and how do we get the seal of God? Kindly subscribe to this channel and share this video to all. You can send your kind donation or be a patron. All are appreciated but not required. Stay tuned as I present to you the mark of the beast end time events. Revelation 14, verse 9 to 10. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. What does God reveal in his word about this subject? First, let us go back in time to see a pattern revealed by scripture. In Genesis, God showed Adam and Eve sacrificing lambs would be a sign that God would give his son and the blood of these animals was to be a deterrent against sin. Hebrews 9 verse 22 says, only by the shedding of blood that there is remission of sin. The lamb sacrifice typified Jesus Christ, the lamb of God. Cain and Abel brought an offering to God. Genesis 4 verse 3 and 4. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. These two sons, they both claimed to worship the same God. Abel's offering was accepted and Cain's offering was rejected. The difference between the two is that Cain did some, not all, of what God commanded, while Abel did exactly what God commanded. One worshiper does it by faith and another worshiper does it by works. And one worshiper does it God's way and one does it in his own way. As a result of that, you have brother persecuting brother and the murderer Cain receives a mark. When we study Bible prophecy, it is important to consider Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. The thing that hath been, that's the past. It is that which shall be, that's the future. And that which is done, that's present, is that which shall be done, that's future again. And there is no new thing under the sun. History will repeat itself. As things began, so shall in the end of time. We are going to see two class of worshipers in the book of Revelation. Class number one, people that will get the seal of God. People that will have the seal of God are representatives of those who does exactly what God says. The Bible describes the true worshipers in Revelation 7 verse 3 and Revelation 14 verse 4, saying, Hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Revelation 14 verse 4, these are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. The people which will get the seal of God will do exactly what the Lamb says. Class number two, people that will get the mark of the beast. They would end up violating the law of God and will do what they will just like Cain, following the beast wherever he goes. Satan's entire mission is to keep people in sin. What is sin? 1 John 3, 4. Sin is the transgression of the law. While Jesus' entire mission is to save people from sin, Satan hates the commandments of God. Let's read that in Revelation 12 verse 17. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keeps the commandments of God. The reason why most Christians don't know what is the mark of the beast, it's because they don't know who the beast is. Let us look closely at the evidence revealed by scripture in Revelation 13. The beast comes from the sea, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, 
and so a beast rise up out of the sea. In Bible prophecy, water represents people or populated area. Revelation 17 verse 15, the waters which thou sowest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The Antichrist beast will come from unpopulated area, gets its seat and authority from a fourth beast, the dragon. The dragon in Revelation 12 is primarily Satan working through the power of Rome and King Herod. The dragon crouches nearby, hoping to devour the baby Jesus at birth. Satan acts through various governments to accomplish his evil works, in this case, pagan Rome. Evidence number three, receives a deadly wound which heals. No other power on planet Earth have experienced this deadly wound. How did the Antichrist experience a deadly wound? We will reveal shortly how history reveals this deadly wound and how it is healing. Evidence number four speaks blasphemy. Revelation 13 verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Blasphemy is when a man makes himself God on earth, and it's also when a man claims the power to forgive sins. Evidence number five, intent to change times and law. Daniel 7.25, He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. The Antichrist will change the Ten Commandments, the law of God, not from the authority of the Bible, but from its own power and authority. Evidence number six has the number 666. Here is wisdom. Let him that had understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Revelation 13 verse 18 says that 666 is the number of a man, and also the number of a beast. And verse 17 said that it was the number of his name. The Antichrist beast of Revelation 13 is none other than the Roman Catholic Papacy. Does the papacy fit the biblical description of the Antichrist? Let us go through the evidences one by one. First evidence, the papacy arose from a populated area. We have learned that waters represents people's multitudes and tongues. The geographical location of the papal power is in Rome, Italy, in the heart of Western Europe. Second evidence, it receives power and great authority from Rome. The mighty Catholic Church was little more than the Roman Empire baptized. The very capital of the old Roman Empire became the capital of the Christian Empire. The office of Pontifex Maximus was continued in that of the Pope. Fits evidence number two. Third evidence, the papacy received a deadly wound. Solid proof from history that the papacy ruled from 538 A.D. to 1798. General Berthier marched to Rome, entered it unopposed on February 10, 1798, and proclaiming a Roman Republic demanded of the Pope the renunciation of his temporal authority. Upon his refusal, Pope Pius VI was taken prisoner. This period of time is an exact fulfillment of the 1,260-year prophecy. The blow was a deadly wound for the papacy, but that wound began to heal and continues healing today. Evidence number three fits the papacy. Fourth evidence speaks blasphemy. Blasphemy in the Bible is number one, when a man makes himself God on earth. We read that in John 10:33. And number two, when a man claims to forgive sin. We read that from Luke 5.21. Look at these claims of the papacy. We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. He, the Pope, is the infallible ruler, the supreme judge of heaven and earth, the judge of all, being judged by no one, God himself on earth. Romans 3 verse 23, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
No man can forgive sin. Only Jesus has the power to forgive sin. The claims of the papacy to be God on earth and to have the power to forgive sins is blasphemy according to scripture. Intent to change times and laws. According to the Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, page 49. Question, what is the second commandment? Here is the answer from the Catholic Church. The second commandment is thou shalt not take the name of the Lord God in vain. That is not the second commandment. The second commandment is Exodus 20 verse 4 and 5. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them nor serve them. That commandment has been removed from the catechism. It's quite obvious why. But there is another change that has been made in the catechism. Question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Sabbath? Here is the answer from the Roman Catholic Church. Because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday, so they claim to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday. The papacy claims to have changed God's law. The second commandment was abolished, and in order to still have the Ten Commandments, they divided the Ten Commandments into two parts. Then they changed the fourth commandment from Sabbath to Sunday. No one on planet Earth can change the law of God. Bible prophecy reveals to us that there would be a global power that will claim to have the prerogative that only belongs to God. For a complete detailed study of who the Antichrist is and all the evidences presented, kindly watch my other video, Antichrist Unmasked. Click on the card to watch that video. What is the mark of the beast? The mark of the beast must be the sign of the beast's or the papacy's authority. Notice the following section from a Catholic catechism. Question, have you any other way of proving that the church has the power to institute festivals of presets? Answer, had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She, the Catholic Church, she could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Another quote from the Catholic Church. Of course, the Catholic Church claims the change was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. What is the mark? Remember Daniel 7 verse 25, which says that the anti-Christian power will attempt to change times and laws. Have they attempted to do this? The answer is yes. What is the mark of the beast? The mark of the beast must be the sign of the beast's or the papacy's authority. They have sought to transfer the holiness and solemnity of the seventh day Sabbath to Sunday, the first day of the week. There is no biblical authority or mandate to this change. The church has done it out of her own sense of authority. She has placed convenience and tradition above the Bible. She claims that this change proves her sovereignty and authority in religious matters. It is her mark or authority. It is the mark, the identifying mark of the beast and its usurped ecclesiastical power. Does anyone have the mark of the beast today? Answer, no one will receive the mark of the beast until religious legislation is passed enforcing Sunday observance. Bible prophecy reveals the Sunday observance will be very soon legislated. The land beast of Revelation 13 representing the United States of America will speak as a dragon. Revelation 13 verse 11, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, that's USA, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon, primarily Satan working through Rome. USA in dragon mode. The United States of America will exercise all the authority of the first beast, the papacy. Revelation 13 verse 12, dragon mode number two. 
USA will force the earth to worship the first beast. Revelation 13 verse 12 causes, meaning force, causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. As revealed in prophecy, the United States of America will force all the nations of the world to pledge their allegiance to the first beast, the papal antichrist. Prophecy clearly indicates that it is the destiny of the second beast to help the first beast recover its power. The land beast will exercise the authority of the first beast on its behalf, compel all to worship, set up an image in its honor, and impose its mark. For a detailed study of USA in Bible prophecy, kindly watch my other video, The Dragon, The Papacy in USA, One World Religion. God's Seal versus the Mark of the Beast. The Mark of the Beast is the opposite of the Seal of God. The Beast's Mark is his claim to ecclesiastical power and authority. In order to understand the mark of the beast, we must also need to completely understand God's seal. These two are the opposite of one another. If you have one, you cannot have the other. The issue then for the believers should be about ensuring that he or she does have the seal. The seal of God should be the primary focus, not the mark of the beast. In obtaining the seal, one is guaranteed that he or she cannot receive the mark of the beast. What is a seal? A seal authenticates a document. Every official document has the official seal. A law with no seal is not binding. Every lawgiver also has his or her official seal. The name of the lawgiver, his title or position, his territory. Every seal has those three things. For example, the presidential seal of the United States contains three elements, name, office, and territory. Every law must have an official seal. Since God has a seal, what is God's position that gives Him authority over the whole world? He's the Creator. All through the Bible, God points us to this fact as the reason why He has authority. Here's an example. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things. Why is God worthy? Of our worship answer because he created everything what sign did he set up to remind us that he is our creator we'll read the answer from Genesis 2 verse 1 to 3 and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, is a memorial of creation. The Sabbath is a memorial in time. It has nothing to do with the Jew. Rather, it is to remind us that God has authority in the world as creator. Is God's seal connected with His legal document, His law? The answer is yes. God's seal is in the heart of His law. It has three elements. Which one of the Ten Commandments contains God's seal? Answer, the Fourth Commandment. What was the name of the lawgiver? The Lord. What is God's position? He's the Creator. He made everything. And what was His territory? Heaven and earth. There you have the seal of God. The seventh-day Sabbath of the fourth commandment stands out as unique in the Ten Commandments as the one commandment that identifies God as Creator, Deliverer, and Lawgiver. Satan knows well the power and the purpose of the Sabbath, and he has sought tirelessly to obscure it and to cause it to be forgotten. Yet God's end-time people will not forget it. They will honor it and keep it as a memorial of creation. I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign 
between them and me, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. The Sabbath is a sign that it is God who sanctifies us. Our own works doesn't make us holy. It cannot save us. Therefore, the Sabbath is a sign of trusting totally in Jesus Christ's righteousness and not of our own. God's own character exemplified in His law is God's seal. Those who through a faith commitment to Jesus Christ honor and obey God's righteous law need not fear the coming mark of the beast crisis because they will have the seal of God. Most of the world will receive the mark of the beast. Why since God has given such a solemn warning not to worship the beast, why would the whole world do it anyway? There are two reasons. Number one, deception. Most of the world is deceived about end time events. Satan will work through miracles at end time and will deceive the very elect. Miracles cannot be always the basis for truth. Revelation 13 verse 13, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Deception also through Satan's religious leaders, causing people to stumble by saying that some commandments don't matter. Malai 2, 7-9, like some ministers teach, it doesn't matter what day you keep holy. God warns people who want their ministers to preach smooth fables rather than the truth about His law. Number two, pressure. There will be tremendous pressure at end time for people to receive this mark. The Bible says, if you don't have the mark, you will not be able to buy or sell. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. We refer to that as economic boycott, as they will use economic boycott to pressure individuals or nations into compliance with what they think is right, that will be used at end time. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. That's a death decree. Worship or else. Ultimately at end time, those that refuse the mark of the beast will be threatened with death. But people that will choose to worship the beast and get his mark will suffer the wine of the wrath of God. The wrath of God is the seven last plagues. Revelation 15, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. God will pour the seven last plagues, the seven balls to worshipers that have the mark of the beast, those who obey tradition above the truth of God's word. But those who will have the seal of God will be protected by Jesus, just like Elijah in the wilderness, just like Daniel in the lion's den, just like the Hebrew boys who stayed true to their faith on the true God, the forehead represents the mind or belief. Hebrews 10 verse 16. A person will be marked in the forehead by a decision to keep Sunday as a holy day. The hand is a symbol of work or outward compliance. Deuteronomy 6 verse 6 to 8. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall walk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Verse 8, very important. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. This old idea of the seal in the forehead is coming straight from the Old Testament. People all been worried about a tattoo that someone's gonna hold us down and tattoo the number 666 across our forehead. The devil is not that foolish, friend. This is not about a tattoo or computer chip in Belgium. The issue is worship, not technology. The seal of God only goes in the forehead. 
It does not go in the hand. God will not accept mere outward compliance. But the mark of the beast can also go in the hand. There will be people at end time who do not believe in the beast or his mark, but they're willing to comply so they can buy and sell. They receive the mark in the hand. The sign or mark for either God or the beast will be invisible to people. You will, in essence, mark yourself by accepting either God's mark, the Sabbath, or the beast's mark, Sunday. Though invisible to man, God will know who has which mark. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone whose names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Revelation 15 verse 2, And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who have victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. My dear brothers and sisters, would you like to be victorious over Satan's end-time deception and be among the saved who stand on the sea of glass and be in the arms of Jesus forever? Who will make it to God's kingdom and be with Jesus for eternity? John the Revelator shows us a threefold answer. Number one, those that will have the seal of God, the Sabbath. Number two, those who refuse to identify with the beast or his image and who refuse to have his mark or name in their foreheads. Revelation 15 verse 2. Number 3. The people who today and for eternity follow where Jesus leads, trusting him fully in everything. Revelation 14 verse 4. Kindly type in the comment section, By God's grace, I will get the seal of God. Kindly support this ministry by subscribing and sharing this video to all. Your donations are appreciated but not required. Share this urgent message to all. May the Lord find us faithful when Jesus returns. Let us all continue to seek truth in Bible prophecy.